Welcome. I'm Erin Nunes, an attorney with the Law Office of Serpina and Bineski. Before I dive into today's topic, I just want to thank you for being proactive and taking the time to seek out information on this important subject. Imagine a scenario where you suddenly find yourself sick in the hospital, incapacitated, and no longer able to pay your own bills, manage your assets, or even make your own medical decisions. With the outbreak of the coronavirus, this scenario is a growing concern, and unfortunately, a growing reality for many. If you were to become incapacitated without the proper estate planning documents in place, you and your family could be at serious financial and medical risk. Some common issues families face when a loved one is incapacitated without the right estate planning documents in place can include having no power to make medical decisions on your behalf if you are unable to communicate your medical wishes, family infighting and stress over what medical decision should be made for you because your wishes weren't documented, no legal authority to write checks on your behalf, resulting in an inability to access your bank accounts to pay the bills, having no legal authority to apply for medical insurance and benefits to pay for your hospital stay, and long and stressful court hearings to get the legal authority to make financial and medical decisions on your behalf. Without the correct documents in place, your family will have to go into court to get the legal authority to make your medical and financial decisions if you can no longer make them for yourself. In the current COVID-19 climate, this is a serious and potentially life-altering concern. Like many businesses, the courts are closing or placing serious restrictions on the number of people allowed in the court at one time. As a result, the process to get legal authority to make critical decisions on your behalf could take months without having the proper estate planning documents in place. Fortunately, with some simple estate planning, you and your family can be protected from these types of situations. This presentation will go over five essential estate planning documents you need to consider during the coronavirus outbreak to protect you and your family. The first document to consider is a healthcare proxy. Unfortunately, tragic events often happen out of nowhere, which is why it's critical to plan for these situations ahead of time. In the case of a lengthy hospital stay, or incapacitation, one of the most stressful things families worry about is the well-being of their loved one. Imagine if there was no one appointed to make medical decisions on your behalf, or if your family had no instructions on your wishes and they were left to guess. Even worse, your medical decisions could be placed in the hands of the courts. That's because without a healthcare proxy, your family will need to petition the court to gain the legal right to make your medical decisions. But the courts are running at limited capacity to limit the spread of the coronavirus. As a result, this process could take critical days, weeks, or even months. Think about the difficulty and stress this could cause your family and the impact it would have on your health care. The good news is these situations are easily avoidable with a healthcare proxy. A healthcare proxy is a crucial document that authorizes someone you trust, your patient advocate, to make medical decisions on your behalf in case an emergency leaves you incapacitated and unable to communicate your own decisions. Don't forget, your medical information is private. What that means is, if you want someone else to be able to talk to your doctors or figure out a billing glitch with your health insurance, you need to authorize them to do so. That's what a HIPAA authorization release does, and it can be critically important to have in place. It's usually best to pair the HIPAA release and the healthcare proxy with an advance directive, also known as a living will. It's so important to document your medical wishes in case you're incapacitated and can't communicate. So, an advanced directive is the second document we'll talk about today. While your healthcare proxy appoints someone to legally act on your behalf, 
your advanced directive or living will outlines your actual wishes for them to follow with respect to your medical care. Your advanced directive outlines the types of medical treatment you would or would not want in certain situations. The assertions made in this document include whether you would like CPR, artificial nutrition and hydration, maximum pain relief, artificial respiration, or to donate organs. This helps your patient advocate make medical decisions for you and eliminates any confusion about certain treatments that you would or would not have wanted. This document can be a big stress reliever for your family so they don't feel guilty making difficult medical decisions for you. Aside from your health care, another major stressor for families dealing with the incapacity of a loved one is how to deal with the finances. You want to make sure your family has access to your finances to pay bills, medical expenses, and apply for insurance. That's where document number three plays its role, the durable power of attorney. If you suddenly become seriously ill and incapacitated, who will pay your mortgage? Who will pay your bills and file your taxes? Who will move money around your bank accounts or apply for benefits on your behalf? Will your family even be able to access your bank accounts? If your family can't access your money, will they have enough funds to pay for your living expenses? Being prepared with a durable power of attorney can alleviate some of the financial stressors and prevent your family from having to go to court to get permission to access and manage your finances. This is an important consideration with the courts closing or operating at limited capacity. When you create a power of attorney, you assign an agent who can act legally on your behalf to do some of the following. Sign your checks, make deposits, pay your bills, contract for medical or other professional services, sell your property, and buy insurance for you. During this crisis, and of course, generally, Another really important document you need to consider if you have children who are under the age of 18 is nominations of guardians. I have three young children myself, so this has been on the top of my list of worries. You want to make sure that your kids are taken care of by someone you trust if you can no longer take care of them yourself. If you're a single parent and have young children at home, who would take care of your kids if you became ill and had to stay in the hospital for a long duration. If you're married, what if you and your spouse both became incapacitated? Who would take care of your kids? If you have children under the age of 18, it's very important to have documents in place to make sure someone you trust is legally appointed to take care of your kids if you're no longer able to care for them yourself. We do that through document number four nominations of temporary and permanent guardians. Our fifth and final document up for discussion today is the revocable living trust. A revocable living trust is one of the most important documents to consider creating as the cornerstone of your estate plan. Similar to a last will and testament, a living trust allows you to pass your money, property, and other assets onto your loved ones in the event that you pass away. However, a living trust has significant advantages over a will, including the ability to plan for situations where you become incapacitated and can't make decisions on your own. That's because a living trust becomes effective the moment it's signed, whereas a will only becomes effective after you pass away. Some of the benefits of having a living trust include naming a person you trust to act as your trustee to manage the financial well being of all of your assets in the trust in case you become incapacitated, preserving your legacy by naming all of your beneficiaries that you want to receive your money, property, and assets after you pass away, transferring your assets to your loved ones in the most efficient way possible by avoiding the long, expensive, and stressful probate court process, 
Without a trust, your family will have to go through probate court before they can receive your assets. Probate is already a long process and will take even longer with the COVID-19 mandated court closures. A revocable trust can avoid costly estate planning and estate tax issues depending on the size of your estate. Maintaining flexibility within your estate plan. A revocable living trust can be changed or revoked at any time while you are still living, which gives you the ability to modify your estate plan if your situation changes in the future. And it ensures that your financial matters and the transfer of your assets to your beneficiaries remains private to protect your family and your estate from unscrupulous creditors and other family members. I want to thank you again for your interest in learning more about the importance of estate planning. If you are interested in getting your estate plan in place to have the peace of mind that your family, money, and property will be taken care of, we can help. To help you and your family stay safe and healthy during this difficult time, we offer phone and web consultations so that you don't have to travel. We can do everything for you remotely. When you call our offices to book your appointment, just let our staff know that you prefer to meet with one of our attorneys in the comfort of your own home via phone or web conference, and we will get you scheduled based upon your preference. Give us a call now at 508-994-5200 or visit our website at myfamilyestateplanning.com. Now and always, we appreciate the opportunity to serve you and your family. Thank you all and stay safe.